Who needs GPS when you can have country roads lead you to a fortune? Meet Jimmy Logan, a former football sensation and loving father who is passionately explaining the lyrics of his favorite John Denver song, Country Roads, to his bright-eyed daughter Sadie. He was a talented football player once, but a foot injury ended his profitable career, and now he fixes sinkholes at a construction site. His phone frequently goes out, since he doesn't have enough money to pay for proper cell service, but he is happy with what he has and doesn't want anyone's help financially, even though his ex-wife offers. His daughter is a talented and witty kid who is preparing for a beauty pageant. While he is diligent and hardworking, he gets laid off from the job because of his limp. Irrespective of this hardship, he tries to complete his duty as a father and goes to the salon run by his sister Millie to pick up his daughter for her dance practice in Charleston. However, when he reaches, he finds out that the practice was the day before. After messing up, he reaches his ex-wife Bobby Joe's house. She has a rich new husband, twin boys, and a huge mansion. He apologizes for getting the wrong day and asks her about the for-sale board outside her house. Bobby Joe has full custody of Sadie and and she is moving across the state to a new town for her husband's work. This infuriates Jimmy because he does not want his daughter to move away so far. He knows he needs to get more money to either hire a lawyer or move closer to his daughter when they move. Jimmy also has a brother called Clyde who was a war veteran. Clyde served in the Iraq War, but unfortunately lost his arm just before reaching the airport while returning. He now runs a bar in the town. While Jimmy and Clyde were having a bit of an argument, Max, a NASCAR team owner and two of his friends enter the bar for a drink. Max is a wannabe influencer who feels the need to document everything. He passes a distasteful comment about Clyde's disability, which annoys Jimmy. He gets into a physical fight with Max and his friends, while Clyde lights Max's car on fire. The Logan brothers always have each other's backs. Before walking away, Jimmy says the word cauliflower, which is meant to be a code word between the brothers. The next morning, Jimmy makes Clyde's favorite breakfast. The two talk about the code word that was exchanged the previous night. It is quite a dangerous word because the last time it was used, Clyde spent six months in juvie. Jimmy has already devised the entire plan and now begins to tell his brother the details. It seems that while he was working as a miner fixing sinkholes, Jimmy came across the highly secure money storage system that is used by NASCAR. Yes, his plan was to rob the biggest event that happens in the United States of America. The money is transported supported by PTT, aka pneumatic tube tunnels, to a real bank vault. To get the money, they would have to blow up the vault, a job only one person can do. Joe Bang The brothers go to visit Joe Bang, who is currently in prison for his previous bank vault damage. While Joe is flattered by the proposal, he turns it down because he is literally in jail already. Plus, he has safety money stashed away for when he is released from jail so he isn't in need of some extra cash. Unfortunately for him, one of his dimwit brothers told his wife about it and she ran away with all that money. Joe agrees to help them after Jimmy tells him that the sensors around the Carvin Hill vault are turned off. He has one demand, and that is that his brothers, Fishy and Sam, are let in on the plan as well. At the Easter Fair, the Logan brothers meet up with the Bang brothers and tell them only the surface details of the plan. Fishy and Sam are on board and collect a packet for their brother from the Bear in the Woods. To get Joe out of jail and back in time before anyone notices he is gone, Clyde drives into a shop at the petrol pump. Keeping in mind the great sacrifice that he has made for the country, the judge sentences him to 90 days in prison. Joe and Clyde work on the project. Jimmy continues to be a good father to Sadie by taking her to the salon and helping her self-tan. One day, Jimmy is noticed by a healthcare worker called Sylvia, who was his junior in school. She saw a nasty open wound on his face and offered to give him a tetanus shot for it. Having lost his job, he does not have the money to pay for it. She tells him that he does not need to give her money for it because the organization works on donations from the wealthy people. Melly is helping her brother Jimmy to plan the heist, making sure everything is going just fine. She knows everything there is to know about cars and trucks. She gives Clyde dimensions for the exhaust covers of a prison truck that leaves the correctional facility every single day. Joe and Clyde start working on the woodwork. She asks her brother if he has a backup plan if things go wrong, but Jimmy is more than confident about his plan. As part of the next step, Jimmy needs a blueprint plan of the sinkholes under the NASCAR track. 
He breaks into his previous office and steals the plan. On his way out, he runs into his ex-boss. He expresses guilt for having to fire Jimmy. Jimmy tries to make conversation about the sinkholes, only to be informed that the sinkholes are just about completely repaired and that they will be moving site soon. This is a huge curveball in Jimmy's robbery plan. They need to move up the heist by one week, which coincides with the biggest race of the season, the Coca-Cola 600. It is the busiest race, which makes it tougher for them to pull off the robbery. Despite this roadblock, Jimmy refuses to call off the plan and asks Melly to start the ball rolling. To figure out which vent leads to the bank vault from the Charlotte Motor Speedway, Fishy and Sam let out a bunch of color-coded cockroaches that get attracted to the birthday cake sent to CMS employee Glima by Melly and Jimmy. Having everything under control and planned, it's time for them to execute this robbery to perfection. Finally, it is race day. Everything has to be timely and as per plan. To begin with, Joe and Clyde must safely break out of Monroe Correctional Facility. During lunchtime, the warden at Monroe was taking a round of the canteen. Joe pretends to be sick and starts to puke all over the canteen. He is rushed to the infirmary to help ease his health. He is hooked on IVs to help with hydration. All the fluids going into his body make him have an urge to use the washroom. The nurse insists on taking him, but he is reluctant to take her assistance. That's when Clyde steps in and offers to take him instead. Back in the canteen, an inmate called Nauman stages a fight with another inmate as per orders of Joe and Clyde, causing the warden to announce a code red and locking all the doors of the facility. The officers on duty try to reach out for backup, but since the warden is an egoistic man, he refuses to take any help from the outside. He is sure enough that he can handle his prison facility well. This allows Joe and Clyde to make their way out. They make use of the exhaust covers that they have made with wood to get out of the facility without being noticed. At the race, Fishy and Sam make an explosive that disables all the card machines, forcing all the stalls to only accept cash. Due to the large amount of cash coming in, the employees are instructed to keep sending the cash to the vault through the PT tubes. On the other side of town, Melly reaches the Miss Pretty West Virginia pageant for Sadie's big day with Bobby Joe and Sadie. After getting her nervous niece settled, she steals away Bobby Joe's husband's brand new, unreleased Ford V8 to complete her role in the heist. She first goes to the petrol pump, where the truck from the correctional facility stops every day, to get Clyde and Joe. She gets them a change of clothes so that they don't look suspicious and Clyde's arm for him. The three then reach the Coca-Cola 600. After purchasing a few beers and gummy bears, the two men make their way towards the sinkhole, where Jimmy is waiting for them. Clyde pushes Joe into a garbage chute to make him reach the sinkhole. On reaching Jimmy, Joe combined bleach, gummy bears, and low-sodium salt to form an explosive which greatly confuses the Logan brothers, who were expecting him to use dynamite to blow open the vault. They refused to believe that it could work. After a long chemistry lesson, Joe finally launches his explosive through the tunnels with the help of one of the empty capsules that they had. After one hilariously failed attempt, the explosive finally works, and their plan is a success. The explosive does its job well, but the smoke starts to release out of the other tubes into the stalls. Jimmy attaches a giant vacuum to the tubes to suck out all of the money from the vault. While doing so, on accident, Joe sucks out Clyde's prosthetic arm too. Clyde is paranoid and starts frantically looking for his arm. He is worried that the robbery will be linked to him, but is calmed down and reassured by his brother. Jimmy promises to get Clyde's arm back and continues to fill cash into large trash bags. Fishy and Sam drive the trash bags out of the sinkhole to Jimmy's truck, but the gate on their way out does not open. Seeing that it's been quite some time, Joe comes out to see what is taking them so long and tries to break open the gate. The explosion in the vaults caused smoke to come out of the tubes in all the stalls during the race. One of the stalls reports this problem to the HQ. They send two guards to monitor this issue. The guards run into Fishy and Sam as well as Jimmy, but do not get a satisfactory answer from either. They see smoke coming from a door and carefully knock down the door. On the other side is Earl, a friend of the Logan brothers. He is enjoying a cigarette during his 20-minute break. The furious guards command him to put the cigarette out and get back to work at once. They also conclude that this is where the smoke is coming from and stop their investigation. The Bang brothers have been trying to figure out how to open the door for quite some time now. Jimmy 
comes and tells them that the lock is jammed and helps them smoothly open the door. Fishy and Sam leave the sinkhole, fill up Jimmy's truck, and make their way out. Simultaneously, at the Coca-Cola 600, Max, the menace from the bar before, has a new driver for his NASCAR called Dayton White. Dayton is a simple-minded man who believes in worshipping his body and not feeding it with artificial foods. Max owns an energy drink company and forces his star driver, Dayton, to chug the drink before his race. Even though Dayton refuses, Max reminds him of his contract. Dayton has returned to NASCAR after a few months of sabbatical, during which he has become a very healthy eater. The sugar in the drink has an adverse effect on Dayton because of which his energy levels crash and ends up losing control of his car. He spins and crashes into one of the barricades, eliminating himself from the race. After the crash, Max and Dayton are having a huge argument about Dayton's contract with Max's company when Clyde and Joe come walking in their direction. Max recognizes Clyde from the bar, and the two get into a fight. Clyde ends up breaking Max's nose in the process. Jimmy slips out of the race arena after disposing of his cap and jacket. He makes sure that the money is safely in his truck. Around the 200th lap, Nauman and the other inmates, who have managed to take four police guards hostage and staged a riot, stage a fire in the canteen area, forcing the prideful warden to call for the fire department. Clyde and Joe sneak into the correctional facility as firefighters and soon get back into their original clothes and positions to remove any suspicion from them. Melly makes it in time to help Sadie get ready for her talent show. The little girl asked for her father, but Melly has no idea where her brother is. Sadie is all set to sing Umbrella by Rihanna. As she is scanning the audience from the stage, she sees her father enter. Seeing her father in the audience, she begins singing Country Roads, his favorite song. This makes him teary-eyed. He then calls in an anonymous tip to the police and informs them about the stolen NASCAR money. Sadie wins the Miss Pretty West Virginia pageant. The Charlotte Motor Speedway gets back most of the money it had lost and claims insurance for the rest of it. It seems like a win for everyone, except for the ones who put immense efforts into the heist. Once Clyde is released from prison, he moves in with his sister Melly. The siblings have cut off all contact with Jimmy, who has moved across state to be closer to his daughter. Joe is furious with the failure of the plan. The FBI have taken over the NASCAR money theft case. Special Agent Sarah Grayson reaches the vault with her colleague to examine the crime scene. She is also called in by Max, who claims to have seen Clyde and Joe on the day of the race. While Max is on to something with his allegations, Grayson ignores it by assuming it is simply a vendetta. She tries hard for six long months to figure out who carried out the heist. Nothing gives off clues because the truck was a stolen one. She has her suspicion on the Logan brothers, but both have airtight alibis. CMS finally asks Grayson to stop working the case and chooses to leave the incident in the past. Soon after the FBI drops the case, everyone involved in the heist, right from Nauman to Gleema to Joe, receives a heavy payout. Sylvia receives an envelope full of cash as a donation for her medical facility. She knows that it is a gift from Jimmy because of the band-aid used to seal the envelope, and the two start dating shortly after. The Logan brothers, Melly, Sylvia, and Joe are seen hanging out at Clyde's bar. Jimmy and Clyde recall their plan, which had enabled them to move a sizable amount of cash to a secure location while calling in the rest of it to the police. Melly had come into the sinkhole while the Bang brothers were trying to figure out why the gate was not opening. Jimmy had put a lock on the side of the gate to keep them distracted. Melly stuffs the bags of cash into a garbage disposal system, and Earl drives the disposal truck towards the dumping grounds. Jimmy had not paid his phone bill, but his cell service was active because the FBI was tapping his phone. As soon as the cell service went off, he went to the disposal ground and retrieved the cash. While the gang enjoys their shots and share a laugh, Special Agent Grayson sees from a distance and tries to flirt with Clyde to get him closer. She is sure of her suspicion and decides to stay a little longer.